guerrilla army led by Wang Ko Min, an American citizen, used this jungle as a base to launch attacks on Vietnam. Somewhere in these mountains could be the remains of front soldiers murdered by their own group. In the dry season, it would be a day's march from the nearest village, but the rains have begun and no one will risk guiding me up there. I've learned all I can here. Back in the U.S., the story is becoming more clear. I hear from Richard Armitage, who's now a consultant in Washington. He won't meet with me, but in a series of emails, he says he personally vouched for Wang Kong Min to his Thai counterparts as the front was trying to set up its operations. But however helpful that was, he insists the U.S. did not have a program of support for the front. I also learn Armitage wasn't the only one who knew about the front's war efforts. I find CIA cables showing the agency was aware of the group. So was the National Security Council and the FBI. But no government agency moved to stop this Cold War militia. While Dan Fong's family mourns his death in private, on the other side of Houston, an annual memorial is being held for someone else's death. The front's leader, Wang Ko Min. For months, I've been trying to track down a man the FBI listed as a suspect in Dan Fong's murder. And in the back of the room, I finally meet him, Johnny Wen. In the FBI files, multiple informants, including a former front member, said he was in K-9 and was involved in Dan Fong's murder. Johnny says he was brought before a grand jury but was never charged with any crime. He agrees to speak with me after the memorial. Từ ngày tôi ra khỏi tổ chức nhưng mà tôi có đưa một cái bức hình tôi quả lớn lên tôi thờ 